Alright, welcome back guys. So, in this second part of the video lecture on tests for differences, we will be looking at the different tests that are available to use if we want to compare the variation in data between two groups. Now there are a few knowledge bites that I want you to take away from this lecture, okay, and a few things that I want you to think about as I'm talking through this video lecture. So I want you to think about what a test for differences does. I want you to think about the difference between the different types of tests that are available for looking at differences. And I want you to think about what graphs you would use to visualize the data. So today we're going to be talking about tests for differences on two groups. And tests for differences on two groups investigate the effects of two categorical or nominal independent variables or a numerical, usually continuous, dependent variable. So a typical data set might look a little bit like this once summarized. Okay. So what we've got here is our dependent variable as incidences of TB in cattle. Okay, this is the thing we've actually measured. So we've measured the percentage of incidences of TB in cattle. That's our dependent variable. And our independent variable are the, cat is the categories before and after. Okay, so we've, what we've got in this type of data set will be measurements of incidences in TB in cattle before and after some sort of treatment. So, as I mentioned in the last video, there are parametric tests that can be used to compare two groups of sample data and non-parametric equivalents to compare two groups of sample data. But just to complicate things that little bit further, there are tests to compare differences from independent samples and there are tests to compare differences from what we call related samples. Okay, and this is basically the first thing that you want to ascertain from your data set. Okay, so the first thing you should do when you have a data set in front of you is decide if the data come from independent or related samples populations. But what do I actually mean by this? So an independent samples data set is one where data comes from two different sample populations. A typical example of this could be a comparison of data from two sample groups and on one sample group you perform one type of treatment, say you gave it a specific brand of wormer, and on the other sample group you treated it with a different type of wormer to investigate how well each works to reduce worming load. Another example could be to look at the effects of two different habitat management strategies on the nesting behaviour of a given species of bird. An example like this, different management strategies would be used in different areas of woodland. So at this point, it would be a good idea just to take a minute to conceptualise the concept of independent samples. So I recommend that you just pause the video for a minute and try to come up with an example yourself of an independent samples data set. Perhaps think about a research project that you're interested in or even one that you're currently conducting. Okay, now you've done that, let's take a look at related samples data. So related samples data is one where data comes from single sample populations. A good example of this is where you have a before and an after treatment of something on the same sample population. For example, you might investigate worming load in a group of animals before and after the worming treatment. So you measure it on the same group of animals before and after treatment. 
Or you might test the effects of a management strategy on bird nesting behavior on the same area of habitat but in consecutive years. Say you look at it in 2017 using one management strategy, so that'll be your before, and in 2018 you try another management strategy and that would be your after treatment. So in these latter examples then, this is where you would have related samples data. So as before then, it's a good idea just to conceptualize this idea of related samples data. And again, I recommend that you pause the video and just try and come up with an example yourself of a related samples data set. Okay, so just before we move on and look at the specific tests that you might use to investigate independent and related samples data, I just want to recap on a key concept which is important just to bear in mind when we're talking about uh, research scenarios. And that is sample size. Okay. So just bear in mind that all the while, when you're thinking about research scenarios, remember that you need to consider your sample size and there is a minimum sample size that we can use. Okay. So you can perform statistics with a sample size of five, Okay, that would be absolutely fine. But the bigger your sample size, the more representative it would be as an accurate estimate of the entire population. Okay, so the minimum sample size we can use to investigate differences in different types of groups, be it independent or related samples, would be five. But do bear in mind that the more samples you have, the more representative it would be of your population as a whole. So over the next two in-class sessions we'll be working with these different types of data. So in the first session we'll be, we'll be focusing on related samples data and in the second in-class session we'll be focusing on independent samples data. So what I'm going to do here for the rest of this video lecture is just talk a little bit more about each of these concepts and the different tests which we can use to analyze each of these different types of data. And then we'll follow these up in class with some actual examples and using SPSS. So let's start with related samples data. So let's say you've ascertained that you have related samples data. You'll next need to decide whether your data conform to the assumptions of a parametric statistics test for differences or if they conform to a non-parametric test for differences. So the parametric test for differences of a related samples group would be called a paired samples t-test and the non-parametric test for differences of a related samples group would be called a Wilcoxon sign rank test. So remember that it is important that you make the correct decision here. And this is because parametric statistics compare means and then a test for differences, it compares means and how close that mean is to the population estimate known as standard error, which you present using a bar graph with error bars, standard error bars. And non-parametric statistics tests use ranks, so it ranks the data and then it compares medians. And this would be presented using a box plot with whiskers. So basically, if you run a parametric test on skewed data, you're at risk of getting misleading results, such as a false positive result. This is because means can be strongly influenced by skew. And so if this is the case, the mean is no longer an accurate measure of central tendency of that data set from which the parametric statistics test is modeled. Because medians are little affected by skew, if you have skewed data, it's better to use a test that actually compares these, or a test that actually compares medians. Okay, so just put that in another perspective. If you have normally distributed data, that means the mean, the median, and the mode 
are around the same place. Okay, so the mean is an accurate measure of central tendency. Parametric statistics compare means, so this would be the correct test to use if you have normally distributed data. If you have skew in your data, then the mean is then pulled in either a positive or a negative direction. So the mean is no longer representative of that central tendency, but the median is little affected. So in this case, we use non-parametric statistics, which compare medians. That's it for related samples tests, the test for differences in two groups. Now let's have a look at independent samples tests. So if you've ascertained that you have independent samples, groups of data, you would also have a parametric and a non-parametric test that you could use. The parametric test would be an independent samples t-test, and the non-parametric test would be a Mann-Whitney test, a Mann-Whitney u-test. Now, the same principles as before apply in terms of what they compare. So the parametric test compares means and standard error. And the non-parametric test ranks the data and compares medians. So what I suggest that you try and do at this point is try to make a key that helps you decide when it is appropriate to choose between the different tests that we've just mentioned. So when it's appropriate to use either an independent samples t-test, a related samples t-test, a Man whitney u-test, or a Wilcoxon sign rank test. So that's all folks for this video lecture. Now, as I mentioned at the start, there are several things that are important for you to take away. So one, you need to take away knowledge of what a test for differences does. Two, you need to take away knowledge of the differences between independent and related samples tests. Three, you want to take away knowledge about the different parametric and non-parametric tests for differences, what these are called and what they do. And four, what graphs you would use to visualize the data depending on the different stats tests that you've used. All right, thanks for listening, and I'll see you in class.